I'm Linda Smith. I work with Ceres Technology Advisors, a financial corporate finance mergers and acquisition advisory firm that I founded in 2006. And I founded that business to serve photonics technology business owners and shareholders that I thought were underserved or not served at all by existing investment banks and business brokers. I work with micro cap and small to middle market companies on the sell side. I help them prepare for acquisition, typically um, by a strategic buyer in the photonics industry or one of the vertical markets that's enabled by the photonics technology. In general, uh, companies sell themselves or divest often if it's a, if it's a pr closely held private company. There might be family reasons or financial reasons or inheritance reasons. Your children don't want to um, take over the business, so you'd be motivated to sell. The last few years, I've been counting and analyzing the merger and acquisition transactions that occur in the photonics industry, which I define as the optical components, um, active and passive devices, lasers, cameras, filters, materials, coatings. And then I also look at um, the next tier of vertical markets that are enabled by photonics. And they are energy, right now solar, uh, lighting, solid state lighting, um, advanced manufacturing, which is metrology, laser material processing, and robotics and then information technology, which is telecommunications and fiber sensor networks and imaging and data storage and things like that. And looking at those transactions first over the last three years, uh, especially this year, 2012 over 2011, almost doubled in the number of transactions. But unlike other industries where an acquisition has to move the needle uh, financially for an acquire to, acquirer to do a deal, in the photonics industry right now, very small companies are getting acquired by very big companies. Um, so small meaning any, anyone from a few million dollars in sales to $50 million in sales are getting acquired by companies that, are, that could be billions of dollars in sales. And I think that's um, an indication that there's an incredible m amount of value right now in this fragmented market and the strategic buyers see it. Um, there's, a, there's, of course, there's intellectual property, which is always a reason why a big company will buy a small company, patents or proprietary know-how. In, in the industry, we see a shortage of, of technical folks, and not just PhDs, uh, technicians, engineers, bachelor's level engineers, product managers that, that have the engineering background with the management background very hard to bring these teams together with the shortage of engineering uh, talent and technical skilled people. To address these applications, it's not just lens design or laser physics anymore. You need a material scientist on your team. You need a biologist on your team. You need an you energy person on your team. And bringing these teams together is very hard. And these smaller companies have done it. And there's tremendous value there, even though they're not the $100, $200 million super earnings companies that, that you typically have to get to to get acquired. Right now in the middle market, the say lower to middle, middle market, um, medical diagnostics is, is just booming. So fluorescence-based uh, molecular diagnostics and cell imaging the multiples um, were seven times revenue, and if you take out a couple, you know, the two, the two big ones, it's still like four to five times revenue. Um, the companies that were raising money, private equity money, in that area were also um, valuations were were good, and there were a lot of them. So I think that's an example of that methods mature. Um, drug companies are are pharma, environmental monitoring people are comfortable with it, and um, you're just really seeing that, seeing that take off. Medical devices were also doing well, and I put in there endoscopy, 3D imaging, and those types of companies. They had very good valuations, and there were a lot of transactions last year. And also advanced manufacturing, um, and specifically the metrology. So online process metrology, inline process metrology, um, 
there were a lot of transactions and valuations were healthy. I would say most of the work goes in on the front end before you even contact a potential buyer. So having your business plan in place and your forecasts and your management team in place is, is super critical before you even approach your, your first buyer. And your business plan doesn't have to be elaborate, <laughs> but you need to be able to communicate where you are, what you, what you want to do, what your weaknesses are, what the buyer needs to bring to the table. And also in, in doing that, coming up with um, um, arriving at a reasonable valuation range um, before you, you start talking to, to the buyers. Um, if the valuation range isn't what it needs to be, change the business plan, work on it for another year or two and get, get to be where you, where you want to be. Um, but to not go through the exercise and, and do a business plan and value the company and just start knocking on buyers' doors, I think it's, 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 it could hurt your business, <laughs> certainly, and it, it's an incredible thing. My clients consistently say they'd never, they had no idea how much work it was to sell their business. Um, so it's a lot of effort, and, and my advice is to go in extremely well prepared. <laughs>